Okay, so in this video we are going to be focusing on the arbitrary precision increment problem and we're going to be looking at how to solve this problem using the array data structure in Python. So we're going to go ahead and describe precisely what is meant by arbitrary precision increment in the context of this problem. And we'll go over that problem specifically and we'll see how to solve it. And then once we understand how the problem works, we'll go ahead and code up an implementation in Python. So let's go ahead and get over to the problem statement so we can understand what this arbitrary precision increment problem is all about. So we're given an array of non-negative digits and the collective total of those digits, that is not the sum total, but if you were to mash all of those digits together in the array, represents a decimal integer. And the problem is we want to add one to the integer that's represented by this collection of digits in this array. And we also want one final caveat, and that is we want to assume that the solution will still work even if implemented in a language with finite precision arithmetic. That is, sometimes if you're coding up, let's say, a problem in something like C, and you're adding one to a really big number, you may encounter an integer overflow. So it may give you the incorrect result because you're adding one to a number that can't be accurately represented in that particular language. So we'll see how we can account for this particular caveat, but we'll kind of set that aside for the time being. So let's go through an example to make sure that we understand what this problem is all about. So as I mentioned, we have an array, let's say the name of the array is A, and we have a digit in each cell of the array. And if we were to mash all of these digits together, this array would represent the number 149. And our goal is to take that number represented by the digits in the array and add one to that number. So for instance, in the case where we have this array denoted by 149, adding one to the number here represented as 149 would give us 150. And again, the way that we wish to represent that number after we've added one to it is in terms of an array as well. So we add one to that number and then the resulting array is 150. So the basic approach that we're going to take to solving this problem in the context of an array is somewhat similar to what you will most likely be familiar with through the grade school, standard grade school addition algorithm. And we'll be stepping through exactly how to carry that out on an array. So the algorithm is basically add one to the rightmost digit. And then if there's a carry, so if there's a carry, if the number that we add here is greater than or equal to 10, then we carry that one over to the next spot and then we keep going until there's no further carry. So we'll go through an example. We'll actually keep this example here as an array of 149 uh, and then we'll step through it to make sure that we understand how this algorithm works. So the first step is we're given this array. We start all the way at the rightmost element, so the last component of this array, and we want to add one to it because that's the whole goal is to add one to the number represented by this array. So we add one to this digit here. So adding 1 to 9 will give us 10, and that's the number that's now stored at this position here. And the way that the algorithm is going to go is we're going to check whether or not the position that we're currently processing, and we're going to process starting from the back here all the way to the front, we're going to check if the current position that we're processing is equal to 10. If it's equal to 10, then what we're going to do is we're going to remove the 10 and put a 0 here, and then add 1 to the entry to the left, if the entry to the left exists. We'll take care of a special case when we have to do that for the leftmost cell, but for now we're just going to keep things simple and we're going to follow this algorithm where we'll just replace a 10 with a 0, add 1 to the cell to the left, and then progress until there's no more 10s to be encountered. So again, what we did, we started off with 149, we added 1 to the number stored at the rightmost component of this array, that gives us 10, and then what we do is we remove the 10, we replace it with a, a 0, and then we add 1 to the position to the left. So we keep going, we process this one now, we ask if the component, the number, the digit stored at this element in the array is 10. If it's 10, then we follow the same procedure. Since it's not 10, we know that we've gone ahead and carried over everything that we need to carry to successfully complete the addition. So therefore, we're done with that particular example. That's the answer. So we know that 149 plus 1 is equal to 150. So let's take a look at a slightly more elaborate example where the carry will have to uh, kind of propagate itself all the way through 
up until this leftmost component of the array. The reason we're going to consider this example is because we're going to have to consider somewhat of an edge case when we code this stuff in Python. We want to be aware of how to process this. This also shows the algorithm uh, performing on each cell. So it's a little bit more explicit as we go through this process. So again, let's assume that we're given an array here as 999. And I just also want to point out that the arrays do not necessarily have to be of size 3. I'm just the two examples that we're going over here are of size 3 because it's short and concise enough to to give an example for. But of course, they can be as long as, as you like. And the algorithm should work just as well. So again, let's say that we want to add 1 to the number represented by this array here. So the first step that we do is we start at the rightmost element in the array. We add 1 to it. So that 1, adding 1 to 9 gives us 10. What we do then is we replace the 10 with a 0, and then we add 1 to the 1 to this position over here in the middle. So that gives us a 10. We process the next element in the array, so we keep moving the arrow here uh, to the left. And then again, we see that we have a 10 here. So what we do there is we follow the same procedure. We remove that 10, and then we move that 10 over here. We replace this over here with a 0, and then we move to the left. So at this point, we had the number 999, and if we continue here, we would have a 0 here, and then we would have no 1. The 1 would, would have nowhere to go to the left because we're at the leftmost entry of the array. So you can think of what we were doing so far as starting off here as kind of something that would be found in a loop. We started off at the beginning or the end, if you like, of this array. We kept processing until we got all the way to the leftmost component of the array. And then as we exit, as we exit this loop, we're going to check if the left, leftmost or if the first entry of this array, let's say, is equal to 10, then we know that we still have some work left to do. Namely, we need to replace this with a 0, add one element to the left of it, so make the array bigger by 1 over here, and put a 1 over here to the left, and we're also going to have to put a 0 at the end. So what we would end up with in this case is something that looks like this. So again, just to go back to that, there was a 10 here, we replaced that 10 with a 0, we moved, we added an element all the way to the front, or we shifted everything down, so now we had a 1 in the beginning, so now the first index of that array is, stores a 1, and then we appended a 0 to the end of the array as well. So that's kind of the special edge case that if we do encounter a 10 at the leftmost position, or the first position of the array, we need to take that into account, that's how we'll account for that. Otherwise, we'll just follow the algorithm of just initially adding 1 to the rightmost component, and then propagating that carry on down throughout the array. So that's the general approach. If that's not clear, I recommend you get out a piece of paper and a pen and just try to convince yourself that, that approach will solve the problem. Uh, so let's go ahead and go over to the editor here and start coding up a solution in Python. So I'm going to define an array and we're going to have it be equal to the initial example that we considered, namely 149. We'll also consider 1999 as well just to make sure that it works for that case as well. So one thing I do want to mention if we go back to the slides and look at the statement of the problem, one of the caveats that we mentioned was that the solution should still work even if this problem was made to work for a language with finite precision arithmetic. So Python doesn't have this limitation. Basically, if we were to do something like convert this, this list, this array, to a string, and then add 1 to the integer representation of that string, or, or, or add 1 to the int converted of that string, we wouldn't get a problem. There wouldn't be any limitation imposed upon us because Python isn't limited by finite precision arithmetic. So I'm going to just show you exactly how you can solve the problem using that approach. Of course, if you're asked this problem in an interview, they most likely don't want you to solve it that way, but I just do want to show you that it's possible to solve this problem in a very concise one-line manner as long as you don't care about this assumption at the end here. So basically, that approach just entails converting the elements of the list to a string, so smashing all of the digits together into one big string, and then converting that to an int, and then adding one to it. So we can do that in a very simple one line. We can join the elements of the string, or sorry, of the array rather. We can convert all those elements into a string, and then we can store that into the variable s. So if you're not familiar with this map function, it's built-in function in Python. Basically what we're doing here is we're saying that we want to apply, we want to map a given function to each element of the array A. So this is the thing that we want to apply the function to, and this is the function that we want to apply. So we're applying the string function to every element of the array A. And then we're just joining 
all of the now string characters of that array into one big string. So that's what this join method is doing. So if we were to, let's say, print out s, let's go ahead and give this a run. Let, let me clear the string first. Uh, so let me run this here. So if we were to run this, we would get the string 149. And then all we would need to do to solve the problem, assuming that we don't care about finite precision arithmetic, we can convert this to an int, add one to it, print out the answer, and we would get the correct answer of 150. So again, we do care about finite precision arithmetic that is part of the problem. So I'm just going to comment this out so you can have this here in case you want to play around with that. So let's go ahead and solve the problem, assuming that the finite precision arithmetic is an issue. So let's create a function called plus one, and it's going to take the array A. And again, let's go back to the slides just to make sure we know what we're doing. So the first step of solving this problem is we want to add one to the rightmost element of the array. So we want to access the rightmost element of the array that we're given and then add one to it. So the way we can do that in Python is we can say a of minus one, that's going to index for us the last element of the array. And we want to add one to that, comp to that element of the array. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to, in reverse order, start from this element here and go all the way down until we reach the last element of the array. So, or the first element of the array, but the last one is in the order that we're iterating through. So we're gonna say for i in reversed, let's see, let me make sure, reversed range of one to the length of a, we're going to do the following thing. So we're going to check if a of i is not equal to 10. So if it's not equal to 10, that would be the case that we encountered here, where we have this, we're processing this, let's say a of i, and we know that we don't have a 10 here, so that would indicate that we've propagated the carry a sufficient amount of times so we can break out of our loop because we have our answer. So if a of i is not equal to 10, we're gonna break out of our loop. Otherwise, what we're gonna do is we're going to follow the procedure that we did up here. We're going to replace a 10. If we do actually have a 10 here, we're going to replace the 10 with a zero, and then we're going to check if this element here exists. And if so, we're going to make sure that we replace that with that element plus one. So we're going to say a of i is equal to zero and then a of i minus one plus one. So we're going to add one to that element. So again, the final edge case that we'll have to take care of after we break out of this loop is we're going to check Let's just go to the slides here to remember. So we had a case like this where the first element was equal to 10. So if the first element is equal to 10, we're going to have to do this procedure where we add a zero to the end of the array and then change the first element of the array to one. So if this case occurs here, that's how we'll essentially increase the array to accommodate for the appropriate amount of digits. So let's go ahead and make sure that we make that accommodation. So at this point, we're outside of the loop, we're going to check if a of zero is equal to 10. If so, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set a of zero is equal to one, and then we're going to append zero to the end of that array. And then at the end of this, we're just going to return the array a. So let's go ahead and make sure that this works for, uh, let's define a one, and then we'll also define a two. We'll say a two is equal to nine, nine, nine. And then let's go ahead and call plus one on both of these arrays. So we'll print plus one for A1, and then we'll also do the same thing for A2. So let's actually make sure that we get the right answer here. So we get the first answer here. So 149 was our initial input, and we got a list which represents the number 150. And we also saw that for the number 999, the array there, we get this array 1000, this array that represents the, the number 1000. So that pretty much does it for this video. If you have any questions or comments or anything of the sort, please don't hesitate to leave them in, in the comment section below. As always, the code for all of these videos will be hosted on my GitHub, and the link to that will be in the description below in this video. So thanks again for watching, and have a great day. Bye.